everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this bow necktie. We've both got our pussy bows on today. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. That's good, Rilla. Okay, off you go. One take wonder. Okay, so to make this bow necktie, you'll need some yarn. I'm going to recommend that you go for a fine weight yarn to get this sort of light, uh, lacy look to this bow scarf. So, um, or bow necktie. Uh, this one here is a 100% merino. It's beautiful, soft, dusky pink, which I'm not sure that's going to show up well on camera, but it's just, it's a beautiful pale pink, and I think it's going to look lovely for this um this bow bow tie or this neck bow neck tie what am I calling it bow neck tie let's go with that and then you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn I'm using three and a half now this is slightly larger than what my hook what my yarn recommends but um, you know you could you could experiment with your hook sizes I like this slightly larger hook for this pattern just because um, you know I like a kind of a looser lacy look so uh, yeah, you can match it to your yarn or you can go slightly larger like I am. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends, some scissors to snip your ends, and you might want a tape measure to take a, a circumference of your cat's neck. Um, you don't need an exact circumference for this pattern, so um, you can just check the guide that I'll include down in the description box. Um, below to you know get a general guide of cat neck sizes and then you can fit it from there okay so to make these bow neck ties you'll need to know how to slip knot onto your hook how to create a chain how to single crochet single crochet decrease and then how to triple crochet and these are all in US terms and then you'll just need to know how to weave in your ends. So it's definitely beginner friendly. It's nice and quick. It comes up super cute. As you can see, I've made two here. One is one is thinner and one is slightly thicker. Okay, the, it's the same yarn, but just one is made thinner, one thicker. So you, you get to decide how thick you want to make this. So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so get started with a slip knot on your hook. However you do that. And then you're going to chain two. One and two. Now in that last chain, or first, last, <laughs> whichever one it is, it's the second one from the hook, place a single crochet. Chain one and turn. And in that one single crochet, place two single crochets one and two oops split yarn and two chain one and turn in that first single cro crochet place one single crochet and then in the last or the second single crochet place two single crochets so we've increased there to three single crochets. Now we're going to do a triple crochet row. So chain two. Now I tend to chain two for my triple crochets. You can chain an extra one if you want to. Um, I just like my edges to be a little bit, just a little bit tighter than my stitches. So if you want to chain a third one here, please do. And then turn. Now triple crochet we yarn over twice, insert the hook in that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. So that's a triple crochet in US terminology. If you need to brush up on these any of these stitches, please uh, check out in another YouTube video or um, you know any beginner reference that you have. And then we're going to skip that next stitch and move on to the third stitch, the third single crochet. Place our triple crochet in there. So one triple crochet in that third stitch. And then we're going to double back and come into that second stitch. So I tend to move my work onto the side here to work into this, this 
the second stitch and then just work a triple crochet so we're just getting that little crossover effect and with the, this few stitches it, it doesn't have the same effect as it will have when we have a few more stitches but we're going to keep increasing here so chain one and turn in that first stitch two single crochets so we're going to increase to five stitches in this in this next row in the center stitch just place one single crochet and then in that last third stitch place once again two single crochets okay so we've increased to five okay sorry about that I just had to uh, run off camera for a second but we've increased to five stitches in this row now we're going to move back to a triple crochet row so chain your two or three and turn triple crochet in that first stitch and so you'll probably start to notice the pattern we need to have odd numbers oops split again you need to have odd numbers of single crochets okay because we need odd numbers for these these triple crochets row triple crochet rows so we're just going to do the same as what we did before skip that second stitch and work into the third stitch with your next triple crochet back into that second stitch and like I said I tend to turn my work on the side for this because I just find that works a little bit easier but however works for you then we're going to skip forward to the fifth stitch and that can be a little bit tricky to find that that fifth stitch sometimes you need to turn your work out like sort of turn your work towards you to see that fifth stitch so we're going to work our triple crochet in there and then of course we're going to come back to that fourth stitch or oh, which one is it it's this one here so yeah sometimes those can be a little bit tricky to see but come back into that fourth stitch okay so we've increased there to five stitches now you can keep your um your bow necktie at this uh this width if you want to it'll depend on the yarn that you're using the hook size and the and the look that you want to go for I'm going to increase up to seven and then from there you could increase to even wider to make it nine but let's go to seven together if you um, want to stop here then um, stop here uh, and I'll put a, a um, time on the video here to, where you skip forward to and to you know to meet us and and finish finish doing the increases so moving on to our, our last increase single crochet row so chain one and turn two single crochets in that first stitch and then one in each of the center stitches two three so one two three and then so two three four five and then two in that and again you might just need to turn that stitch towards you to get those two loops and then two in this last stitch and that will make our seven chain two turn or three depending what you're doing triple crochet in that first stitch and then skip the second stitch come into the third stitch and then back into that second stitch and then skip forward to the fifth stitch strand there and then back into the fourth just unwind a bit more yarn and then come into the seventh stitch and then back into 
that sixth stitch. And sometimes those those stitch, second to last stitches can be a little bit tricky to find. But just come back into that sixth stitch. And that's our increases completed. Okay, so continuing here, and if you've decided to skip forward uh, from just your five stitches, so um, you'll, you'll be meeting us here. Otherwise, we're moving on now, and we're not increasing anymore. And like I said, unless of course you want to. If you want to increase to nine stitches, then you would, um, in your single next single crochet row, just do the same as what we've been doing in these previous ones. So two single crochets in that first stitch, one single crochet in each of the middle stitches, and then two single crochets in the last stitch. Okay? But from here, I'm not going to increase any more. I'm at the width that I want this to be. So I'm just going to place one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, so if you're meeting us here and you've decided to stick at your five stitches, this is what you'll do from here. You'll just be placing one single crochet in each of your five stitches if you want that thinner, thinner necktie. And if you want thicker, of course, you'll do one more increase round. Okay, moving on to our, oops, got a chain first, chain two, and turn. And from here on out, you're just going to repeat that, that previous, those these, these two rows here. So doing your, your triple crochet as before, skipping forward to that third, doubling back to the second, Skipping forward to the fifth. Doubling back to the fourth. Forward to the seventh. And then finally back into the sixth. So you're just going to repeat those two rows, so that row of single crochet and then the row of, of uh, triple crochet, until you get to the length that you want for your um, bow neck tie. So you want it long enough that you can tie a nice bow, um, and you obviously want it long enough to go around your cat's neck circumference. So keep on going. I'm going to go for um, Melba's neck circumference is around 23, 24 centimeters. So I'm obviously gonna have enough to accommodate that and then I'm gonna have some extra length to be able to tie a pretty bow in it for her. So just continue repeating those last two rows. So no increase and then we're going to keep working until we want to start to decrease. So. I'm going to work off camera now and you do the same. Go to the length that you want. So I, th oops, sorry, I'm a bit distracted by chatting. That should be just a single crochet. So keep on working and work to the length that you want and I'll catch you once I've gone to my length. Okay, actually I've just come back to show you something here. Now this is a mistake that you could make and you you might um, not understand what's happened. So what's happened there is I've worked twice into the same stitch. Okay, I've worked twice into that third stitch. So just be careful of that. It can quite easily happen. Just make sure you're skipping forward that extra one and that you're not working back into the same stitch twice. Okay, that's just to show you what can happen if you you kind of get to the end and you realize, oh, I haven't got two to work into in the end. That's probably what's happened. Okay, so continue on alternating those two rows and uh, like I said, I'll, I'll meet you. I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so I've finished to the length that I want and I've measured it and it's about 80 centimeters and that includes this last up to this right up to this last end and so I'm going to add another couple of centimeters by decreasing on this other end so it's going to be let's say 
I don't know, four or five centimeters on this on this other end. So I've just finished a triple crochet round there. So I'm going to chain one and turn. So to start your decreases, you're basically just going to decrease the way you increased. So using these first two stitches, so I've got seven stitches. You might have a different odd number. So you might have three, or, or sorry, well, you might have three if you want made it really thin. But you've probably either got five, seven, or nine. Okay, so I've got seven across mine. Um, you know, as we discussed about the width, that's the width that I wanted. So I'm going to decrease in those first two stitches. So insert my hook, pull up a loop, insert my hook in the second stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. So that's a single crochet decrease in those first two stitches. Then in the center stitches, I'm going to place one single crochet. So in those, for me, it's three center stitches. And then I'm going to decrease in these last two stitches. So same process, single crochet decrease in these last two stitches. So that's going to bring me down to five stitches. I'm going to chain two and turn, working my triple crochet row as before. So, so you always need an odd number to work this little crisscross triple crochet row. So I've decreased down from seven to five, to five. I'm just going to finish off this triple crochet row. Oops. Back in here. And then I'll skip across to the last stitch. And then back into the fourth stitch. So then of course I'm on to a single crochet round again so I'm going to decrease from five to three stitches. So just decrease as you did in the previous single crochet row. Decreasing in those first two stitches. One single crochet in the center in this case and then I'm decreasing once again in those last two stitches. Chaining two. My next triple crochet round is just three stitches. So one. Skipping across to the last stitch. And then back to the second. Oops, my yarn is split a bit there. Let me just go back to that one. Back to the second stitch. Well, it's beautiful yarn, but it does split quite easily. It's beautiful pale pink. Okay, and now I'm in a single crochet round again, chain one turn. And then I've got a decrease in these first two stitches. And then one single crochet on the end there. Chain one and turn. And now we've finished all our triple crochet rows. We're just going to decrease in these last two stitches here. So you've got two stitches left. Chain one. And then just one single crochet in that final stitch. And then yarn over, pull through leaving a tail to weave in. Where's my scissors? So now all that's left to do is just weave in those two tail ends. And what you can do as you weave, you can shape your end a little bit. And I'm looking for my needle now. It's all underneath my table. Okay, so you can shape your ends a little bit as you weave these in okay depending on how you want them to look so just thread your darning needle and I'm just going to come in down this side and I just want to refine my point slightly at this edge so again I'm going for kind of like a ribbon look you know so I want that that to look a bit like a ribbon, cut ribbon down at the bottom there. 
And then once I've just I've shaped my point how I want it to be, I'm just going to weave through some stitches. Actually, I might just go straight back up here. So weaving in your ends is obviously securing your ends, but it also gives you an opportunity just to tidy things up a little bit. So use it how you need to, and then I'm just going to weave across one side here in that single crochet row just to secure it further and just be careful when you're weaving you don't weave in and pull too tight okay you want it to be secure but don't let it misshape your misshape your work okay so i think i'll say that that's enough you can go backwards and forwards a few times but i think i'm going to just stick with that now and I'm going to weave in my other end of camera and I'll come back and we'll finish off together. Okay, so I'm just cutting off my final tail end and actually what I, you know, I, I mentioned that you can use your weaving in just to tidy up your ends a little bit and especially down at this end which was the end that I did the decreases, you'll find that they, they might decrease quite sharply and what I've done there is I've just evened up that edge using my... Uh, using my um, end that I'm weaving in. Okay, so you're done. So how cool and simple is that? And it just, it is made to just be this cute little, cute little bow that you can tie and, you know, easy to fit, easy to wear, easy to size. And it's this cute little bow. And anyway, I'll, uh, I'll put, take some photos of Melba wearing this as I want it to sit. So, well done. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial and I hope you've enjoyed it. So if, you, um, you know, if you've got time, please send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. It just makes my day seeing uh, your cat wearing his or her uh, crochet creations. So um, thanks very much once again and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.